Hello, welcome to lesson 4 of the Cargo Lesson Series. These lessons are available as videos on my YouTube channel and as interactive learning materials on www.manila2010.co.uk. In this lesson, I'll introduce the International Code for the Construction and Equipment of Ships Carrying Liquefied Gases in Bulk or IGC Code also code for the construction and equipment of ships carrying liquefied gases in bulk or GC code and the existing ship code. I'll introduce these codes from the point of view of passing an oral exam at master's and chief mates levels. International code for the construction and equipment of ships carrying liquefied gases in bulk or IGC code applies to ships regardless of their size, including those of less than 500 gross tonnage, engaged in carriage of liquefied gases, having a vapor pressure exceeding 2.8 bar absolute at a temperature of 37.8 degrees centigrade, and certain other substances as shown in Chapter 19 when carried in bulk. IGC code applies to new gas carriers built after 30th of June 1986. IGC code contains 19 sections or chapters. Section 1 describes character of classification, definitions, surveys of gas ships and certification that the ships need to carry. Section 2, ship survival capability and location of cargo tanks, sets out the requirements for minimum survival capability of a gas carrier following hull damage and also minimum freeboards and intact stability requirements. This section also describes ship side discharges below the freeboard deck, conditions of loading and damage assumptions. It also discusses location of cargo tanks, flooding assumptions and survival requirements. Section 3 Ship arrangement sets out the requirements for segregation of cargo areas, accommodation, service and machinery spaces, and control stations, besides also setting the requirements for cargo pump rooms, cargo compressor rooms, cargo control rooms, access to spaces in the cargo areas, airlocks, bilge, ballast, and fuel oil arrangements. It also discusses bow and stern loading and unloading arrangements. Section 4. Cargo containment defines the tank types such as membrane tanks, semi-membrane tanks and independent tanks, besides setting out the requirements for design loads, structural analysis, allowable stresses, corrosion allowances, secondary barriers, insulation, construction and testing of cargo tanks. Section 5. Process pressure vessels and liquid, vapor and pressure piping systems sets out the requirements for piping fabrication and joining details. Besides setting out the requirements for testing of piping, cargo system valving and also the requirements of ship's cargo hoses. Section 6. Materials of construction systems sets out the requirements for materials of construction, welding, and non-destructive testing of used wells. Section 7, cargo pressure, temperature control systems, sets out the requirements for refrigeration systems used in maintaining, loading, and unloading of cargos. Section 8, cargo ventilation systems, sets out the requirements for pressure relief systems, additional pressure relieving systems for liquid level controls, vacuum protection systems, and size of the valves. Section 9, environmental control, and section 10, electrical installation, sets out the requirements for environmental control within the whole spaces, including inerting and types of electrical equipment. Section 11, Fire Protection and Fire Extinction sets out the requirements for fire safety, fire water main equipment, water spray system, dry chemical powder fire extinguishing systems, 
cargo compressor and pump rooms and fireman's outfits. Section 12. Mechanical ventilation in the cargo area sets out the requirements for spaces required to be entered during normal cargo handling operations and spaces that are not normally entered. Section 13 Instrumentation Gauging Gas Detection sets out the requirements for level indicators for cargo tanks, overflow controls, pressure gauges, temperature indicating devices and gas detection. Section 14 Personal Protection sets out the requirements for protective equipment, safety equipment and first aid equipment. Section 15 Filling limits for cargo tanks sets out the requirements for higher filling limits at the reference temperature. And section 16, use of cargo as fuels sets out the requirements for the use of cargo as fuel. Just by knowing the content overview of the IGC code, you can get a better idea in terms of what's contained in the gas carrier codes. You may now use the interactive slides at the end of next slide to find out the content of each section in much greater detail. These interactive slides are not available in the YouTube video version of this lesson. You can only access them at www.manila2010.co.uk So far, we discussed the contents of the IGC code. But as mentioned earlier, IGC code applies to new gas carriers that were built after 30th of June 1986. So which codes do apply to the ships that were built before that date? Gas carriers built between 1976 and 1986 are required to comply with the code for the construction and equipment of ships carrying liquefied gases in bulk. It's known as the gas carrier code or GC code in short. So the first one was the IGC code and this one is GC code. The regulations covering gas carriers that were built before 1977 are contained in the code for existing ships carrying liquefied gases in bulk. The content of GC code and existing ship code is similar to the IGC code, though they are less extensive, uh, which is also a summary of ship building practice at that time. So having a general understanding of the gas carrier codes and its content should be satisfactory should a question related to these codes be asked. As always, physical browsing through these codes should help you in understanding their use better. On that note, that's me done for the gas carrier codes and I shall see you soon for my other cargo lessons. Do not forget to use my next two interactive slides should you wish to know more about the content of IGC code. Interactive portions are only available at www.manila2010.co.uk. See you soon in one of my other lessons. Bye.